Longer Shake here to do what might be a long awaited mod guide for the Busby Easy Fire. Now, Busby Air Warriors Easy Fire, I think, is one of their best blasters ever. Now, I know kind of everybody jumped on board the train of, hey, Busby made something great. And I am all for that because I'm a fan of the company and you always want to see, just like with your favorite football team, you want to see them have a good season. I want to see Busby do good things because I am a fan of the company, not necessarily every product they put out. This one's a winner though. Much like the revolution is right now, it's, this is already rocketed up to like one of my top 10 favorite all time Busby blasters. So, once you find a good stock blaster, what do we want to do? We want to improve it. We want to make it better in whatever way better might mean. That's what modding is. Take something, make it better. Now, you can already see what I've done. This actually is a very, very simple blaster to mod, and that makes it even more of a great buy for what it costs. It's pretty simple. The, uh, the Busby Sentinel Breach by Foam Sport on Etsy is a direct drop-in almost, as close to drop-in as you're going to get, kit for this. Because, of course, the uh, Foam Sport Breach is this right here. When you pull this back a little bit, you can see it's a CNC machined aluminum breech. It's a pusher breech with an O-ring seal going into a chamfered aluminum, we'll say, forward breech with a, it has a uh, CNC point for 30, 17 30 seconds brass to be put in. I am running just under seven inches. It ended up being six and seven eighths inch because my brass, let's scoot back a little further, is just hidden by the faux barrel. It's basically a protective shroud. And as you can see, I've left it even. I can also easily put a scar on. Or, you know, a printed scar is what I'll probably use. Like the Accuratio from France Foamworks is pretty much my favorite currently. And I will run one on here. It does have the performance to do so. I've tested a few different springs. Right, right now is probably the spring that I will leave in it. And again, this is a very simple mod. You quite simply remove your air restrictor that comes in a Busby blaster. And for those that say, don't remove your air restrictor. Yes, do remove your air restrictor. It's literally in its name what it does. It restricts airflow. By doing so, all you have to do is drill it out. And there is a seam on the stock breech. I've kept the front piece here so I can do this video. The stock breech has a seam right here. Take your pipe cutters, like so, go around on that seam to break the seam. Remove this. Drilling out the remainder of this, of course, watch your, your plunger tube. Don't put any nicks or gouges in it. But drill this out to where the foam sport breech can then be put in here with a little bit of epoxy. Now, I did not change the seal on this. This plunger, the plunger rod comes with a pretty good seal and it has a plunger head that does not need padding. It does not have dead space. Busby has already taken care of those couple of issues with the stock plunger rod. As you can see, that is a solid front and it is good enough straight out of the package. This is one of the easier mods that I've done ever. And I have ran, I was starting to say, I've ran a number of different springs for testing. I ran a 12 kilogram recon and retaliator spring that I got. It's an old one from NF Strike, if you guys remember that. But I settled on a turf, turf blaster spring. I had an eight kilogram. And that's what's going to end up surprising you in the performance. I'm running it a Turf Blaster 8 kilogram Retaliator Spring in this build right now. And it will stay in this build. I was going to go up to a 12 kilogram, but for the performance I am looking for, I do not need to. This has hit a high of 183.6. 
It averages about 167 to 173, depending on darts used. Adventure Force Pros, we're hitting 171 on average. Workers, the I have some white workers. They were actually averaging a little low. They are averaging around 165 to 167. And then I had a kind of call it as you pick it mix of random darts some that I don't even know the brand of, that I put a few mags through and had a, a range of around 163 to 183. So, quick, you know, min-max average, and you're splitting the difference there. So, 173 feet per second average on an 8-kilogram turf blaster spring. Now, the 12-kilogram NF strike spring... I posted in my Discord that I did not think that that was a true 12 kilogram. The initial compression on the 12 kilogram NF strike spring was no was no more than the uh, 8 kilogram of the turf blaster. Or I compared it to an Orange Modworks. The Orange Modworks 8 kilogram actually had a little bit higher initial compression, and that shouldn't be the case unless that's a very very extreme progression spring but it also was a full inch shorter in length which also hurts the performance especially on what basically is somewhat of a speed seal here because this is a tapered plunger tube and if you want to know what a tapered plunger tube is it literally has a slightly larger inner diameter down here and it angles in as it moves forward to to your breech so quick little lesson but all in all all you need to do just to a pusher breach i like the indestructible nature of the uh, foam sport breach yes they're a little pricey at 60 dollars, but they're they're worth it in my mind 100 percent. if you're going to use the blaster a lot why not put the best you can in it and this almost begs the question of should I just be doing an entire alloy plunger tube and pusher breech? Maybe. <laughs> I'm, I might be tempted to take this whole design to a local machine shop and see how much that costs to get that done in aluminum, as well as the linkage and the priming bar. That's probably going to be insanely expensive, but I would be tempted to see what they would quote me to redo all this because that would be awesome <laughs> i don't know that that'll ever happen i've been wanting to do that with a snipe a busby snipe and do a full full alloy internals on a busby snipe but that's kind of a pipe dream i don't have that funding <laughs> but putting this back together that way you can see the hydro dip Bringing roundabout the conclusion of my Easy Fire mod, I just wanted to show stock Easy Fire. It came out this year and it absolutely just enamored me. I love the fact that here is a quality mag fed primary from Busby that has full mag cross compatibility with everything on the market, has an end strike compatible stock and stock attachment point. So I like the stock, might have been pretty good. I know some people have collapse issues with it at full extension, but mine are pretty good. I have two of them. <laughs> so, I have had an absolute, it's like revitalized, you know, the Busby MagFed line. Just this alone, pretty much. But still, it was a great stock platform. And of course, us as modders, you always want to take something good and make it better. Now, remember, this is what it looks like stock. That's not the one that has all the work done to it. Here is mine. Now you can see the color scheme is keeping with the colors that came on the blaster. Except for, of course, the base color is green. It's green with white panels, black on the uh, priming handle and on the grip. And then it has the blue stock and, of course, orange trigger, orange sight, orange barrel, which, you know, is expected. But... I went with blue. This is Rustoleum Seaside Blue to go along. It's a pretty close match to the stock. Not exact, but it's close. And then 
We're also in a bright orange, which is one of my favorite colors to incorporate into Hydro Dips because it's a bright, you know, very colorful color. It's bold. And over a number of coats of white as a base coat, it makes the colors pop out even more. So I did a lot of that, and I love some of the ripples that happened in this Hydro Dip. It dips really nicely. And at some points it's striking, and at some points it's a little more muted. And I, I like that variation in Hydro Dips. That's why I'm drawn to it personally. But each side has its own thing that it does, and I love that. It's very unique. Each dip, each Hydro Dip is different when you do the, the swirl technique. But this thing ended up being an absolute home run of a mod, in my, my opinion. Now, with this, it is firing over 170 FPS on a 8 kilogram turf blaster spring using that foam sport breech that's actually intended for the Sentinel but works perfectly on the easy fire. And then I have a 17 30 seconds brass barrel that I cut down to just under 7 inches long. It's about 6 and 7 eighths of, of barrel. And the reason is, is that, like I showed on the workbench, it's a little harder to show there, it is basically shrouded by the stock faux barrel. It provides, I've got it recessed just a little bit, like like a sixteenth of an inch or a few millimeters, actually only about two millimeters. For those of you not on Freedom Fractions, if you get the reference, you get the reference. Not giving it, I'm not giving it away. But even so, on eight kilogram spring, this gets a very good performance, consistently firing at over 170 FPS. My last mag topped out at 179.8. That is great performance out of an 8 kilogram spring. And the best thing about it is if you wanted to mod a blaster and hand it off to somebody who needs something easy to prime, I am going to do a single pinky prime. And it is easy to do that. And you're still getting 170 FPS. So the easy fire, the whole concept of it being easy to prime and fire, holds up under modding at high FPS. If you, Some people don't consider 170 high, but it is. It is. Once you're breaking up over 150, you're getting into the, the high FPS territory, in my opinion. No, it's not a 300 FPS long-range sniper, but... It's a 170 FPS Busby Easy Fire that I think turned out beautiful in the Hydro Dip. I'm biased. It's my Hydro Dip, so I am I am biased. But I think it turned out looking great. I love the I love the individual panels that Busby does. Like the foregrip is a separate section that you can take apart. Each of these, like this, we'll say the upper of the receiver, is a separate part. The lower of the receiver is a separate part, and the grip is two parts. You have the main section of the grip with this little rear insert, and that allows you so many options. My next dip could be leaving, like I'm going to bring this back over, I could leave the green and then dip the white panels. You could do that. Like I could see like some striking like blue and, and dark gray, or you could do blue dark gray, black, you know, could do that to incorporate some of the other colors. Good. Could do orange and black to mix in with a bright green. Or again, you could dip the green again in a whole different color. Could go, I could do my team, Mongoose team colors, you know, that, that's another one I might do, because I am absolutely going to build more of these. This has become one of my go-to modding platforms from here on out. So be ready to see a bunch of these over time because they're cheap to buy. I'm talking about $20 or less for an easy fire. And the most expensive thing will be if you're going to do the foam sport breach, which I don't know how much their markup is or not, but they're $60 and that is the main cost because the turf blaster spring was about $10. So $20, $60, $90, and then a stick of brass. So, got about $90 or so into a very nice custom blaster that's mine. 
And that's something that is hard to pass up on. You know, it's making something your own. Of course, you could do a pusher breech of your own design. You could do it yourself. I love the foam support breech. It takes away all the guesswork and adds in some indestructibility in the breech area. So, worth it to me. I just can't buy them very often. But, hope you enjoyed this. And, till next time, have fun modding and flinging foam.